Hello everybody, my name is Mathis and welcome to the Judge Mathis channel. If you follow me on Twitter, then you probably already know this, but for those of you who don't, I'm happy to inform you. There will not be a normal Judge Mathis this week. Unfortunately, the last week, which is kind of the week that I usually get all the writing done for a script and the voice work and stuff, I had an incredible amount of tooth pain. So much so that I couldn't even wait to go to my regular dentist. I needed to go to see an emergency dentist and within three days they yanked out a wisdom tooth that has been causing me a lot of pain. But because of that, I just didn't have time to get the normal amount of work done needed to get a proper Judge Mathis video up and live on the channel. However, I didn't really want to leave you without a video here. I have been on a every two week schedule for a good long time on this channel now and I kind of want to maintain that rhythm uh, and not really miss a beat. Now, we will have a Judge Mathis next week, meaning you'll have a video this week and next as I do get back to work on uh, what review I've been working on for a while, but in the meantime, I wanted to give you something, some filler, something to talk about, and in doing so, this is going to be a non-scripted, probably more rambly video than you're used to. It's gonna be talking about something that means a lot to me and why I do a lot of what I do and a little bit of a habit I've picked up since starting this channel. Now it's no secret that the reason I even started YouTube is because of my fandom for video games. More specifically, this particular channel, Judge Mathis. It's my creative outlet to share my utter love of this industry, of this medium, of this way of telling stories that can be different from player to player, depending of course on the game and the genre. It's something that I've loved ever since I was four years old. That's when I picked up my first controller at my grandfather's house. I believe I played Adventure Island. I definitely played the original Mario and Duck Hunt, uh, but Adventure Island, I believe was the name of the game. I remember playing uh, a skateboarding caveman. Um, was one of the games that I first played when I was very young. And shortly thereafter, my parents ended up picking me up a console for the house and I've just played games like that for the longest time. And over the years, as I played more and more, uh, those around me really didn't understand my obsession with video games. I mean, I used video games for so many reasons. It was my coping mechanism for bad days. It was uh, something I would do to relax instead of, you know, sit back and watch TV. I played video games. And for a lot of people, especially back in the late 90s, their way of, of coping with a bad day or relaxing was watching hours of TV. Mine was to play games, so many games, and I had a massive collection of video games, uh, especially towards the original Xbox into the Xbox 360 era when I was able to get my first job and my first paychecks. I collected video games by the hundreds. I had countless Xbox games and PS2 games. And then I, as we went into the new generation, Xbox 360 games was kind of my, my drug of choice. And it was a point of pride for me for a very long time to have that big of a collection. I was able to show off to my friends all the games that I had. They could borrow games. We would trade games back and forth. Uh, and I could walk in and it was like my own personal library in a way. I really enjoyed just being able to see everything that I've owned and, and, and each one holding a memory for me when I first would pick up a, a game and, and play it and beating it and to be able to put that back onto the shelf and, and knowing that I beat that game, holding so many memories, so many hours uh, of, of just happiness, I guess, in that particular disc, which sounds so silly, but it's the same way for people who really enjoy and love a book and will reread it so many times because it holds such nostalgic value for them. Um, I remember one game in particular, in other countries I think it's called Fahrenheit, here it's called Indigo Prophecy, and I remember buying that game, not really knowing much about it, and staying up all night and playing it all the way through and falling in love with that game. And then having my friend come over, uh, who was the friend that always come, came over, if, I, if I've ever talked about a friend coming over late into the night, it's usually this guy. Uh, and then playing that game for him and having him watch and, and him uh, thoroughly being excited and enjoying the game as well. And to be able to share that emotion and share that memory uh, with him, there's just so much there and, and it really, it's hard to explain. It, it, it really means a lot to me in so many ways. But uh, I was also young and stupid in a lot of ways. And for a big portion of that time, especially in my very early 20s, 
uh, I needed money pretty bad. Not because I was a drug addict or anything, but things came up, bills and whatnot, and I needed money. And one of the things that I ended up doing to get that money was uh, the gamer's sin of taking in my entire collection and trading it all away for money. And it sucked. I remember having big black trash bags, uh, like those 30 gallon bags filled with my things and uh, getting rid of them and the hurt uh, as they would scan each one of my games in and you know, you'd see like $2 come up on the register and, uh, and, and treating that game like it meant nothing to them. They were just taking in this transaction. But for me, it meant everything. That was not just a $2 game. That was a game I spent 16 hours beating or I spent an entire night with my best friend sharing these emotions and memories of the story being told before our very eyes uh, and, and, and having to give all of that away. And it really, really sucked. And for a very long time after that, years, I couldn't afford to really buy video games anymore. I would try and grab the big hot thing at the time, um, but there was no attachment to them. I couldn't hold on to them for very long. And if I wanted a new game, I'd have to get rid of, you know, two that I own just to afford a new one. And that, that connection w was lost for quite a while. And then of course I got into YouTube and once YouTube started, uh, especially once I started to grow and make a name for myself, uh, developers were willing to give me keys for free, which for the first month is an amazing thing. And then obviously it just becomes part of the job. And I'm still very grateful that they're willing to share their, their hard work with me to, to look at and review or play on my channels. Um, but I didn't have a physical representation of that game anymore. My Steam library is filled with hundreds of games, but to me, it doesn't really matter because it's all just this one black box that sits there and there's no, again, attachment to those games anymore. That's changed recently, especially because of Judge Mathis. Judge Mathis has given me a reason to kind of start getting physical games again. And the reason for that is because of the way I actually make the show. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do when I first formulated how the show was going to look and how it was going to work was I wanted to have a physical representation of the game I was talking about uh, within the set, as it were. I wanted it there as I talked about it. Even if I only did about two minutes of live action stuff, I wanted the game physically there for you, the viewer, to see. Uh, and I wanted to have it there. So as I started reviewing games that I either owned in the past or never played and really wanted to, I would go out of my way to go see if there was a physical copy that was easily attainable. And slowly, I started to pick up these physical copies of games. And one thing I didn't really talk about is that when I was a kid, I may have played a lot of console games, but I played an incredible amount of PC games. A huge amount. I never really owned any because the PC that I actually had wasn't very good, but one of my friends when I was much younger had a massive PC game collection. And back then, burning a game uh, was very, very simple. And at the age of like 12, you know, you don't really think I'm stealing. I'm just taking my friend's game and making a second copy for myself. And I played a crap ton of PC games. I mean, I had a stack of those blank silver CDs just in jewel cases where I'd write the name of the game on it. And I'd, be curious if that's still somewhere in my mom's house that I could grab. But I played a ton of them. And as I started to play games for Judge Mathis, I started to re remember all these amazing games that I used to play when I was a kid on PC. And it really made me want to go back and start getting those. So not only was I picking up games to display as I talked about them on Judge Mathis, but now I started to get the itch to start collecting games again, but more specifically PC games, because they were such a huge part of my childhood. And I own so many PC games now on my PC, it just kind of all fell into place. And so I began collecting games again. And I kind of wanted to talk about what PC games were like back when they came out and the kind of display cases they, they came out in, as you can probably see one really weird one right here, Thief the Dark Project from the, the year 2000. Um, what I plan to do with this, and if you'll see any more videos like this on this particular channel, at least, in the future. So, over the course of the past few months, I've been collecting a ton of PC games. And one thing that I really have started to fall in love with is the way that they used to come packaged. Uh, nowadays with PC games, you're going to end up getting things that look like they are in DVD cases now. They don't look special. A lot of them now don't even have a CD in them anymore. They just have just download codes and they're 
kind of boring and lame and really disappointing, but back in the 90s and the 80s and even the early 2000s, PC games were special. And there was something special to me about PC games as well. While console games were amazing and they did a lot of cool things, PC games were very mysterious. There seemed to be a whole nother level of gaming involved when it came to PC. RPGs were very different on the PC, obviously with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, the expansion packs, of course, Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale, that stuff didn't exist on consoles. Strategy games were nowhere near as competent on consoles as they were on PCs, so PC games were just very different for me. But, as I said, the packaging, the way they were marketed, so different. I have a very distinct memory of going into a, a, either a Best Buy or a Babbage's and up on the top shelf was the original Tomb Raider game. And what do you know, it came in a very strange shaped case like Thief the Dark Project. It was a trapezoid, I think they called it, case here. Uh, and what's cool about this, and I apologize for the glare, uh, is the way this box just opens. So, and, you know, usually on the back you have your typical description of what the game is, but this opens up in a weird like hourglass figure and it just has so much stuff in there to sell the game. And it sounds stupid, but they just don't do this anymore. It's really cool to have a piece of history of the way games used to be sold and of course, uh, look at it like, like this. Moreover, in these old games, something that is just so awesome that you only get in collector's editions really now if you think about it, is the stuff that comes in this, these types of things. For instance, the Dungeon Keeper game, a game I reviewed like last month, comes with a little novel talking about the hero of the game who inevitably ends up dying in the opening cutscene. Other games come with these huge fleshed out maps. One of my prized collectibles that I have in here is the Zork Trilogy. Not the original like one, two, and three, but all three, they made a Zork collectible trilogy uh, that hopefully I'll be showing some footage of as I'm talking about it, that comes with a, a detailed book built into the case, a coin that represents the currency of the fantasy world that you're in, a full hand-drawn map that belongs into the game and shows you the entirety of the world, and all kinds of other goodies, and I believe they're called feelies, things that you can feel, touch, look at, and enjoy. You just, you didn't feel like you were buying a game anymore when you ended up grabbing PC games back then. You felt like a lot of these were giving you a piece of the world, a piece of the art. Nowadays, and, and I have a bunch of these, you get PC games that are just the DVD cases, I, as you said. You get the manual, you get the CD, and that's the end of it. And it's kind of just boring. But these, these other games just have so much to go along with them. Uh, Star Wars Dark Forces, another really cool part of the collection that I have, the original Dark Forces, comes with a little novel and a bunch of posters and all kinds of things that are just really, really cool. The other thing I really enjoy about collecting is it feels like I'm owning a piece of history. These games, these particular games don't exist anymore. They don't make them like this anymore. And of course, a lot of these games that I own are on old obsolete formats. Three and a half inch floppy disks, five and a quarter inch floppy disks, and so on. A lot of nowadays you get a download code. Even CDs are becoming more and more rare as time goes on. And owning something like that, the, the Zork one for instance, is on those old floppy disks. The, it's, it, you're preserving, for me, I'm per, I feel like I'm preserving a piece of history that you don't see around anymore. And it's really been an exciting avenue to kind of explore and go down. And I really want to take ex excellent, excellent care of these games. In the past few months, my collection has grown by about 30 or so games. I've got a couple more coming in uh, the mail uh, that I don't have here on display yet, including the original The Sims in its big box, as well as a, uh, a couple more Star Wars games, as that's kind of been my big driving force recently is to collect all the Star Wars games that were released over the course of the 90s and early 80s on PC. Uh, and like I said, I feel like I'm preserving a piece of history. It's something that's so cool to just open up and it's like a time capsule for me to pop open these boxes and look at all these things that came in the box. And it, to think about just like what the time was back then for gaming in general, uh, Zork, think about it, in the 80s. What was video gaming back then? A niche hobby that a bunch of nerds played. And to think we're, you know, now 30 years on, and now it's just this massive thing that exists. And now I'm just, 
I want to preserve what it used to be. It's such a weird want and need for me to do, and I absolutely fucking love it. It's, it's just awesome. So why am I making this video? It feels rambly, and I knew it was going to be, but I wanted to just share this with you, the viewer. I wanted you to know why, at least a small part, as to why I do what I do. I, I, I'm here to entertain. I wanna entertain you as, as much as possible, but I also want to inform you a little bit, at the very least, as to where these games came from, uh, what they looked like in their physical release when they came out, and what, you know, to expect at that particular point in time. I think one of the things I like to do is go in and play these, these masterpieces, or these games that were considered masterpieces back when they initially launched and play them from a point of view where uh, I hadn't played the game before. I, um, the review I'm specifically noting here is System Shock 2. I played System Shock 2 as somebody who only ever played the Bioshock series, but I always knew System Shock 2 was this influential masterpiece. And to be able to go in and look and play this game, knowing full well what playing video games in the late 90s were like, it's interesting to take that particular lens and kind of dissect it and see what made these games so good. And of course, to take a look at the packaging. Now, the System Shock 2 that I own is just the remastered classic. This is not by any stretch the original big box release of the game, and I'd love to have that at some point, but this one right here is just the classics PC CD-ROM game. Uh, one of my endeavors one day is to own the original and the System Shock 2 big box and have them both part of my collection. But for now, you know, this served the purposes of the review that I was looking to do and have this available for display as I talked about the game. Of course, with box copies, you get some weird stuff too. One of the cooler aspects for collecting for me, as well as I wrap this up, is finding the oddball PC games that I had never heard of and look absolutely ridiculous. And as I kind of collect these games, I really want to review them. I want to talk about them in, in time. Uh, one that I recently picked up uh, that I found pretty pretty freaking cheap, um, but the, the cover, I just, I had to have it, uh, is a game called Shadow Worlds. Now, I've never heard of this game in my life. Uh, the, the cover looks silly as shit. It just looks incredibly silly, but it's a tactics game that on the back at least looks somewhat like XCOM, which I actually have the original XCOM here as well. Um, but the face, it like, I've never heard of this game in my life and it looks silly and I really want to review these weird PC games that exist that I've never heard of before because I want to know what what this world of obscure PC games is like. So that's it. Uh, I just kind of want to ramble and, and share this obscure passion of mine, why I love collecting. And I'm thinking, it may not be on the Judge Mathis channel, but I'm thinking of doing uh, videos once a month or maybe once every other month, updating you on my collection. Some of my more obscure finds, some of my weird finds, and some of my more treasured finds as I do kind of go to thrift stores every now and again, or I'll prowl eBay every so often to see if there's anything I can find on the cheap. Um, but basically my idea is to collect these games and just kind of hang on to them, keep them safe, keep them in a clean environment. Uh, I just want to keep them uh, safe from the dangers of the outside world, the people who don't necessarily care for them nearly as much as I do. Uh, I adore doing this. It's really, really cool. So if you're interested in seeing these maybe monthly updates, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, and if you are curious or just don't want to see it on the Judge Maths channel, head over to my Mathis Games channel. I'll end up doing it there probably as well. This video particularly might be on both channels. We'll see. Uh, but I, I just love talking about this stuff and showing it off. So thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble. I'll be back next Friday with a review of Theme Hospital. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much. And I can't wait to keep giving you more and more fun content to watch. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.